uh, because Anna Kasparian has recently announced her unalignment from the political left. She said she no longer feels that she can be considered one of us in times like this. And she wants to talk about the real grifters, not Jimmy Dore, not Dave Rubin. Sam Sater from the Majority Report recently joined the Vanguard to discuss what some see as a shift to the right by Anna Kasparian and the Young Turks. There's been quite a bit of talk and critique around Anna's recent statements, with a few disagreements between Sam and Anna regarding her perceived conservative viewpoints. In this segment, we'll check out a few highlights from Sam's appearance on The Vanguard, and I'll share my thoughts as we go. Not the litany of conservatives uh, that are making money hand over fist, uh, defending and rampaging on behalf of the criminal bloodthirsty siege of the people in the Gaza Strip. I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see Sam, but she says the real grifters are the progressive branded nonprofits that have repeatedly misused public funds. Why won't the left call them out? And she goes on to talk about how she's voting against an increase in taxes for nonprofits to prevent homeless people because she still wants to be able to complain about it as her number one issue, in my view. Uh, she says, uh, <laughs> I'll be voting no on Measure A, uh, which is to plan to raise another $1 billion through what she calls a regressive sales uh, tax to build homeless shelters, housing, and other services. So the big grift is taking away money from the hard-earning people like Anna and giving it to homeless shelters and other NPO organizations that are interested in combating what is a serious crisis in Southern California. But that's not all. If you go back a little further, you could see her most recent article where she talks about how gangs are taking over Aurora, which is a suburb outside of Denver. I happen to have spent a lot of time in, and I can report back safely that there are no gangs taking over this poor suburban enclave, <laughs> as even their Republican mayor notes. So I'm just wondering, what is it that makes people do this ideological pivot in their late 30s? Well, um, and just to add to that Aurora thing, two points. I can't help myself. One, the Aurora thing, it turns out those guys in that video weren't even part of a gang. Uh, that, that video that went viral, apparently, uh, coming out of Aurora, I guess it was like a week or two ago, the police said they're not part of a gang. I'm not familiar with measure a, although I do think sales taxes, I, I do have a problem with sales tax being a, a little regressive. I would do a different type of taxation, but I don't think that's her point. Um, the, I, I think, I mean, look, I, I came from this. Uh, I, I came from a world where, you know, I was working with a lot of people who, um, had at, when I left that world, you know, at least in terms of professionally, um, had, um, you know, a decent amount of celebrity or fame. And if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Now let's dive back into the video. Um, there's obviously in show business, you run into a lot of people who sort of like really want, uh, celebrity and, um, and, 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 and money, of course. I mean, you know, look, I, I, I want to be able to make money. Um, but I think there is, I think part of like, I don't know if it's a function of LA, um, to be honest with you or, um, but. Part of it is like for people, they get super excited about the celebrity aspect of it and uh, the money aspect. And it's, you know, you guys know it's hard work. Um, and I think, I think, you know, my sense is, is that at TYT, they saw uh, Hassan make uh, a, just a ton of money. And have a huge amount of success, and I think there was, you know, in certain uh, parts of TYT, there was resent, and um, you know, I don't know uh, Anna particularly well. I'm not sure that we've ever actually met in person. Um, well, she's a big, big fan of ours, though, so I'm sure she's watching Sam. Sam Setter mentioned that Anna Kasparian might feel a sense of competition with Hassan Piker due to his success. While Anna and Senk Uyghur have a large and established platform on the Young Turks, 
Sam's theory suggests that Hassan's rise might be influencing Anna's direction. However, I'd lean toward a slightly different perspective here. Hassan Piker has maintained a clearly left-leaning stance without moving to the right, so if the motivation were financial or strategic, there wouldn't be an incentive to shift to the right just based on his success. Now Sam, who's experienced the media scene in New York and L.A., may see aspects of celebrity culture influencing her approach. But without living in that media hub myself, I'd say it's more likely a blend of factors, rather than a simple desire for recognition. This could be a mix of genuine belief changes or new strategic choices, rather than competition or celebrity aspirations. Figure out how she could uh, bust out of, uh, of TYT. Um, I know, oddly enough, that like, uh, you know, uh, well, she was doing that show with Michael at uh, the Jacobin, and I have a feeling like there was maybe a sense that uh, there'd be more opportunity there mm -hmm. um, if they built out that, that um, you know, uh, I know Michael was good, planning to do a daily show with the Jacobin. Uh, I don't know what part Anna would have played in that, but maybe it was, you know, maybe there was opportunity there. And that was an opportunity for her that obviously uh, uh, didn't exist after Michael passed away. Um, and I imagine there's some frustration and I think like, look, you know, Jimmy did a comedy central special, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, 25 years ago and, um, still has the same jokes if you see him live, <laughs> I, I would have no doubt about it, but I think like, you know, it, he, he, this was a way to revive his career. I mean, I know, uh, Dave Rubin, I, I, I spoke to a writer whose kid went to the same school as my kid like five or 10 years ago. And um, he said to me like, Oh, Dave Rubin, I wanted to talk to you about this. Dave Rubin would just like harass me to write about him all the time. I think it was just like a real um, uh, desperation for fame, celebrity and money. And, um, and I think this, you know, I think, after they do this for an extended period of time, you know, it's hard. It's tiring. Sometimes you feel like, uh, you, you know, it's, um, you know, uh, people have maybe thinner skins uh, than others and they start to chase where they're getting clicks. I mean, to me, it's a parody. Somebody posted a parody like this uh, when I was on Chapo years ago. We made a joke about like, how we would do a right wing turn. We always like, joke about being the Trump supporting stoners. It was this was like in 2016 or 17. And I was like, yeah, no, I've thought about this for years. In fact, we used to do Michael and I used to do a fake right wing show on Halloween and on um, April Fools. And the reason why we did it two times a year was because like we so desperately wanted a break from doing you know like uh, it was yeah. like like this is gonna be like a day off like we don't have to do anything like we all the talking points are there and um <laughs> for a long time my, the the joke was like you know this is how i do it and, and even when i got uh, divorced i'm like this is this is it this is my opportunity when right. you get divorced you're mad you know like, like i'm an angry old divorce guy and it starts with like uh you know uh, my, my wife's, uh, you know, making me, uh, my ex-wife's making pay child support. And, uh, then like, it just like builds into like a broader, uh, sort of misogynistic palette. And then I realized like, Oh, you know, and that's how you, you might be the only man with the platform that dodged that bullet. I want you to know, I mean, people I would have sworn up and down were going to ride with the left until the end, like Matt Taibbi going hysterically, you know, right. It seems like Sam Cedar might be onto something, especially regarding the idea of right wing grifters. Some speculate that Anna Kasparian's recent changes could be part of a shift, but it's hard to say definitively. There are rumors of events, like her run-ins with issues in L.A., possibly shaping her views on topics like crime, but that's just speculation. Sam mentions that Anna has talked about starting her own show, and it's interesting because, with her experience, it would be pretty easy to do. On platforms like these, there's often a rivalry. Think Coke versus Pepsi or Marvel versus DC. 
Many viewers feel torn between shows like The Young Turks and The Majority Report, which both offer valuable perspectives. So what's your take? Do you think Anna Kasparian's changes reflect a shift in views, or is it just an evolution in her perspective? If you've been a longtime viewer of The Young Turks or The Majority Report, do you find yourself leaning more toward one or the other? Or are you open to following both? Let me know in the comments.